Thus, an abundant supply of carbohydrate food exerts a powerful influence in directing the stream of glucose metabolism into lipogenesis, whereas a relatively low carb intake tends to minimize the storage of fat. To put it simply, if you care about the regulation of fat tissue, you know, obesity is sort of excess fat accumulation. We want to know what regulates fat tissue. Insulin fundamentally drives fat accumulation. Carbohydrates fundamentally drive insulin levels. It means carbohydrates are uniquely fattening. And what's interesting is that by the 1960s, that was the conventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom, what my mother grew up believing, it's all over the textbooks, carbohydrates are fattening. If you went on any diet in a hospital for obesity, the first thing you were told to remove from the diet were starches and sugars, um, starches, flour, bread, sugars, sweet, carbohydrate-rich foods. Um, and then by the mid-1960s, the science of fat metabolism sort of confirms this conventional wisdom. And what happens, if you go to slide 57, is that we simultaneously begin to believe that fat causes heart disease. And if you believe that carbohydrates are fattening, then the diet you're going to tell your patients to go on is one that's um, actually very high in fat. Ideally, protein content doesn't go up because protein can stimulate insulin secretion, among other things. So you replace the carbs with fat, and instead of putting them on a high-protein, high-fat diet, you put them on a basically with a high-fat diet with the same amount of protein you're always getting. Um, but by the mid-1960s, we had come to believe that dietary fat causes heart disease, particularly saturated fat. So this is an article from the New York Times, slide 57, 9, July 7, 1965, New Diet Decried by Nutritionists, Dangers Are Seen in Low-Carbohydrate Intake. So the very same year that the American Physiological Society publishes a 500-page te textbook, about the science of fat metabolism that basically says, as George Cahill, the co-editor, said, carbohydrates driving insulin is driving fat. The New York Times runs an article in which they talk about how dangerous these diets are. And they start off saying it's a medical fact that no dieter can lose weight unless he cuts down on excess calories, either by taking in fewer of them or by burning them up in exercise, which was the convention of the dogma, and it's not true. And because a diet sharply reduces carbohydrates, which make up 45% of the average American's daily caloric intake, it naturally leads to a proportional or even quantitative increase in the intake of protein and fat. And Jean Mayer is quoted saying, it is the fat increase that prompted Jean Mayer to say that encouraging the diet for middle-aged Americans is, quote, in a sense, equivalent to mass murder. So the very same year that the American Physiological Society comes out with this home that effectively say carbohydrates make you fat. The leading nutritionist in America is quoted in the New York Times saying that if you tell your patients not to eat carbohydrates, it's the equivalent of mass murder. And for this reason, you know, the, the hypothesis just kind of vanished. Um, if you paid attention, I document this in good calories, bad calories. Um, and if you look today, remember I said you look at biochemistry textbook, endocrinology textbooks, they will tell you that insulin determines fat accumulation. It's slide 58, Leninger's Principles of Biochemistry. If you look at what makes fat tissues fat, they'll say high blood glucose elicits the release of insulin, which speeds the uptake of glucose by tissues and favors the storage of fuels as glycogen and triglycerols while inhibiting fatty acid mobilization in adipose tissue. So insulin favors the storage of fuels and inhibits the mobilization. But what makes people fat? To a first approximation, obesity is a result of taking in more calories in the diet than are expended by the body's energy-consuming activities. So what you see is this divorcing of the actual hormonal regulation of fat tissue. Insulin makes fat cells fat. People get fat because they eat too much. And the reason this happened is because if you focus on the hormonal regulation of fat tissue, then the way to treat obesity is by removing the cause and the cause is the carbohydrates, particularly the refined carbohydrates and the sugars. Um, let's skip the clinical evidence, and I'll go straight to my conclusions, which are on page 64, and then if anyone has the patience for the clinical evidence, we can go over that too. Um, conclusions are simple. Biology is driving obesity, not physics. It's not the laws of thermodynamics. It's the laws of endocrinology. 
Obesity is a sort of fat accumulation, not energy balance, not overeating and sedentary behavior. Fat accumulation is regulated fundamentally by insulin and dietary carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is driving insulin, is driving fat. Carbohydrates are literally fattening. Increasing fat accumulation will cause compensatory increases in energy intake or decrease in expenditure. So if somebody's getting fatter, they will get hungrier or they will get more sedentary. But the hunger, the gluttony, and the sloth are side effects of the change in the hormonal milieu caused by the carbohydrates they're consuming. And the only non-pharmaceutical remedy, and there are no pharmaceutical remedies at the moment, is to restrict or remove the causative agent, get rid of the carbohydrates. And because you don't want to lower calories particularly, you just want to get rid of the carbs because you do not want to starve the person and make them hungry all the time, you have to feed them a high-fat diet. So those are my conclusions. I want to thank you, those who are still with us, I can't tell. (laughs) And um, if you want to unmute your phones. Gary, this is Jeff. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very comfortable with you going back and hitting some of those slides that you brushed over if you want to, but others probably have questions and want to jump in and get going, I'm sure. So I'm happy to just stay on the line. I'll be here to facilitate in whatever way might be helpful, but... Really, I'll let you drive the discussion, the question and answer, and this group's gotten pretty good at moderating themselves over the last few weeks. So thanks so much for all the great material, the good presentation, and I'll let you continue the discussion now. Okay. Um, I'll go over the clinical evidence. We're just the point I want to make, the, the, you know, I could have used the data from the latest Atkins trial that was published again two weeks ago, um, although they didn't have this evidence. But... Um, the point I want to make, and the point I'm making in this study is carbohydrates are fattening, period. Fat isn't fattening, protein isn't fattening, carbohydrates are fattening, particularly the ones we digest quickly, um, the starches, the, the refined carbs, and sugar is probably unique because of the fructose moiety and how it affects the liver. But if you look at, go to slide 60, and I just want to show you what happens in these slides. Um, this is the uh, SHI study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2008. And they took 322 workers at an Israeli research center, overweight or obese, and they randomized into three groups, a low-fat diet, a Mediterranean diet, and a low-carb diet. Okay. What they don't usually discuss, and they didn't do in this study either, both the low-fat diet and the Mediterranean diet are calorie-restricted. So people are being told to eat less. This was the case with the study that came out, the Atkins trial from Gary Foster and his colleagues two weeks ago. You calorie restrict these other two diets. You tell people they can't eat more than, like for the uh, Foster study, it was 1,500 calories for women, 1,800 for men. The low-carb diet, as we know, is not a calorie-restricted diet. You can't eat carbs. You can basically exercise as much gluttony as you want as long as you're eating fat and protein. So that's why this tends to be an animal product rich diet. Um, Go to slide 61 and you'll see the results. Um, You can see the low carb group in purple lost the most weight and at six months, you know, the weight is pretty much plummeting um, for the first five months and then things begin to come back to a baseline as they do with the other two diets. But still, after two years, uh, the low-carb diet shows by far, uh, far more weight loss than the low-fat diet. And what's interesting, again, is a low-carb diet isn't calorie-restricted. So if your hypothesis is that calories determine weight loss, the first question I would ask in any of these studies is, why is it I get equal or greater weight loss with a diet that isn't calorie-restricted? You know, I do one calorie diet calorie-restricted, the other diet not. I get the same weight loss or greater weight loss in the non. If I was a medical researcher or a scientist or I had an eighth grade education, I would say, well, what do calories have to do with it if one group gets more weight loss or equal weight loss without restricting calories? Now go to slide 62, which just shows the heart disease risk factors and what we all know pretty much and we see in every study, including the later Foster study, is that when you restrict carbohydrates, um, Blood pressure gets better. Uh, funny, in this shy study, even LDLC get was better on the low-carb diet than the low-fat diet. HDL improves greatly. Triglycerides, uh, total cholesterol.